heading west Thought that it might be the best thing for us Till I was thinking about me And all the things that you'd leave behind Family and a peace of mind And I, I, I got you I am gonna love you till the stars go out Shelter up above you till they all fall down We ain't got light, we got love We ain't got light, we got love In the heavy rain, two of us together can weather any change that comes our way. Nothing here really feels like home. Home is who you're with when you don't feel alone anymore. I am gonna love you till the stars go. How's it, everybody? And welcome to The Daily Pigeon. My name's Andy Bumatai. And I'm James Money. And you are the Hammerjang Gang, an exclusive club, you know, and it's just um, reserved for those who feel like commenting. Yes. Very special group. <laughs> A select group of people. Uh, that's what we call the uh, the people in the chat, the Hammerjang Gang. Hammerjang in Hawaiian Pigeon English means all mixed up because we are certainly that. And I'm saying how's it to Kulika 1965. There's E.T. Guerrero. How you? Sojo Steve coming in hot. Let me take this off. Uh, let me take our... Uh, whoops. Come on. No, now it's not going to... Oh, you know what? I got to do this and then do that Gee tom quinn aloha no how are you um ellen with the catch snatcher <laughs> catch and a snatcher yeah happy uh, aloha monday yes yes uh, and it is kind of a special um uh, monday we'll talk a little bit about that mm -hmm. <clears throat> my voice is a little had it because we did a show on maui and we'll talk about that too charles k how are you um, and there's uh, Maui Tony Maderos. How are you, Maui Tony, Tony Maderos? We were just in your zip code uh, this weekend. Frank DeLima, Augie Tolba, and myself at the um, Maui Arts and Cultural Center. Yes. There we go. Pokoli T. Aloha no. And there's Carla Costa. Thanks. For what? What we did? I want the, um, the catch snatcher. Ooh, that's the best. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, as opposed to the reverse, which we won't even go there. Oh, thank you, Devin. Aloha. Lady tie-dye. Ooh, what kind? I made it. Woo, woo. What kind of avatar is that? Is that the new Habut baby? I was going to say, it's going to give Habut baby competition. Yeah, we got Habut baby competition. I don't know. I like that. Yeah. Uh, man, we might have to snatch that one, huh? Uh, snatch catcher. <laughs> Steven, hello, how you brother? Thanks for being here. Polani saying how's it to Devin, our moderationist. We have four moderators, uh, or as we call them, moderationists. That's right. And that's um, Nani Aloha, um, C Honda, and where, and Devin. Hey, I think we have somebody new. Who's, oh no, ma uh, Magic uh, Pili uh, Kaki. We've seen. Um, magic before just change the avatar like, throw me off oh that's my little grandson who used to be a baby in the first avatar almost three years old now oh man past jedi girl hey pukoliti mahalo for subscribing thanks ah eh? how are you okay let's see how was your weekend james my weekend was um pretty good i got a sunburn on my face what yeah, I went, um, helped out with the uh, football team this weekend. Oh. Forgot a cap or a hat. Usually, oh, do you coaches wear, wear hats. sunscreen? No, because I usually have a hat. But oh, oh, oh. cleaned out the truck, and yeah. I look, where's my hat? No hat. No I, hat. But I didn't know I had a sunburn until this morning when I washed my face and took the towel to dry it. Oh, that, that surprise! <laughs> yes, that burned a lot. So you literally took one for the team. Yeah, yeah. Ah. Uh, and then also, um, Graham Elwood is in town, yeah. so I went to his show at Stand Up Honolulu. Oh man, I I met a, Oh no, I was out of town. Yeah, it was full house, so it was, yeah, it was pretty yeah. good. Um, he, he just performed. Uh, he did a run. He was in Maui on Thursday at the Playground Maui, yeah. and then Friday at the Kona Elks Lodge. Yeah. Ending up Saturday here at uh, Stand Up Honolulu. And I was at the um, Mac. Um, yep. At the time. And what? A, and anyone who showed up, thank you so much. Uh, I had to run to the airport because we were trying to catch the last flight out so we can save money and not have to, you know, just stay over and then fly the next morning. So, you know, I'm doing my set, you know, and it's a great audience. They were, you know, it was those kind of, you know, like, get off. I'm not going to say I have a favorite island, but... Maui audiences are awesome. Amazing. And 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 we fill the place, mm. you know, and that's, you know. So anyway, so I'm looking off to the side and here's Greg, you know, our manager guy good going. <laughs> He's time time to fly. I'm like, ah. And then we got there, the plane was delayed. I could have done more time. But oh. um uh Frank called me afterwards and Augie and said Man, I didn't want to get off. What a great crowd. So yeah, awesome. so mahalo Maui. Thank you so much. You know. As they say, Maui no ka oi. No ka oi. As far as stand-up com comedy goes, I got to tell you, what an audience. And uh, we have a couple announcements. <clears throat> Today, um, hence, is May Day, yes. right? But it is also the first day of our fourth year of doing the uh, Daily Pigeon. Yeah. And it's been through many iterations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But uh, as far as, you know, constantly doing shows, three years solid today, first day of our fourth year. Ooh. How's that? I'm glad to be on the ride uh, with the oh, Daily bro. Pigeon. You're a big part of it. I just, I got another uh, little thing. Hey, tell James he's doing a great job. You know, people uh, donate right a lot of people they don't like to you know do it online and, and yeah so they they send me it there there's nice. a, i don't know some kind of link somewhere yeah. <laughs> but it gets to me but thanks anyway, uh. yeah look at that Kevin. congratulations Devin. i see your wrench what i see your wrench what is that? <laughs> oh but De De uh, Devin gets a moderator wrench or something yeah mm -hmm. we don't see it because it's a different oh, thing. I, see, I see good on you andy yeah. thank you namaste zen and uh speaking of uh, maui um when i was coming back mm -hmm. okay um first of all i want you guys to know as i go into this story i am fine okay don't go oh no he got hurt or anything like that but what happened was um, I parked kind of far away in, in the other parking lot, so I had to walk from the inner island terminal mm -hmm. to the main terminal where I was parked, right? Now, after we got back, it was about 10 o'clock, okay? 
So I'm walking all by myself, right, carrying my bag, nobody else around, and I look, and there's this guy. He's about six feet, kind of husky. I would say about 30 years old, but but but, you know, uh, perked my spidey sense. Mm, radar. What, yeah, was that. He um, was pushing one of those um, the airport a, carts, the smart air, cart. Yeah, the airport carts with stuff with like, homeless stuff. Uh. In it. So I was already like, uh oh, right. So I veer a little bit to the right, and he's walking, and he s slides over kind of closer to me, and I went, oh no, bro. And as he passed, you get ready for this. As he passed, right, he shoots a left out just full on jabs out to my head. I saw him because I had my eye on I saw my, so I kind of turned my hair and he hit me like right here, just missed me, bam! And he hit me like that, right? Yeah, are you ready for this? So, so I was carrying my bag, so I dropped my bag, got my hands up and started like, you know, trying to do my best Mike Tyson, right? Keep the head moving and stuff. And he saw this and, and, he, and you're gonna love this, he goes, Oh, hey, 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 sorry, sorry, man, I'm sorry. I went, you're sorry? He goes, yeah, yeah, man, I'm sorry, really sorry, sorry. And I went, okay, bro, okay, hey, all good, all good. And I put my hand out like this to knuckle bump him, right? Mm -hmm. So he comes closer and he goes, yeah, yeah, I go, hey, well, all good, bro, all good. Oh, thank you, bro. He comes in and I crack him right in the middle of his chin, boom! <laughs> False crack me, you punk. <laughs> <laughs> he reels back. I'm serious. He reels back and it starts going, whoa. And I'm coming in on him, right? He turns and runs. Wow. Leaves his little cart and all his homeless stuff there and just takes off. I'm like, oh, come on, bro. You know, you know, I'm not going to be in one, not a fight for at least another 10 years. Just <laughs> my, my, my. That's why he's going to wait till you're 10 years older and, then come, and back. then come back. But he looked like he was about 30, kind of a husky, but I think it just surprised him so mm. much, right? So, you know, I did the right thing. I kicked over his cart and you called him, you know, <clears throat> a mother lover. Oh. <laughs> and said, come on back here. And he just, eh, he's like far away. Wow. That's I insane. Know. Yeah. And he probably thought he was going after a defenseless, yeah. uh, mature gentleman. Right. <laughs> and, then, and when you didn't go down, which he only had plan A, which was yeah. drop him and steal his stuff. I thought, I think he was, he expected me to go, oh, and then, you know, like fall back and yeah. grab my back. But where are you going to go? Yeah. You know, he's, but, but they're not the best decision yeah. makers. But yeah, I'm sure he was, he saw an easy target, old man, gray hair, watch this. Boom. I was so angry when um, when Greg was texting me and telling me what happened. And I was like, what? You know, like, I want to go to the airport now. <laughs> you know? Well, you know what, though, James? If you were there, he wouldn't have done it. Well, I'm, so I think of, you know, like like a movie yeah. scene where you're maybe 10 feet away or, or 50, you know. you're Yeah, but we wouldn't. If we and got creeping up on him as he's running away. Yeah, but, but you know, you and I would have been walking together if yeah. we got off the plane at the airport. Yeah. You know, yeah, you know. But it was, uh, it was, I didn't get hurt and it was, yes, felt kind of good, you know, like, whew, because, and what I do, right, is I, I get into that mode, I act like crazy, right? <laughs> Just like, come on, bro, let's go! <laughs> and he's like, whoa, whoa, what is this, you know? And in the back of my mind, Please, bro, just just yeah. keep going, keep running. That's the comedian in the back there talking. Yeah, the hey, what are you doing? You're overselling. <laughs> you're, we're, you're... we're not that tough. <laughs> you're overselling. <laughs> you turn yeah. into Mel Gibson from Lethal Weapon all of a sudden. Yeah, exactly. But you know, it was uh, amazing. But you know, again, I, I um, somebody said, um, a t lady tie dye said. Um, <clears throat> Uh, we, we, she said, so many broken souls. Oh, breaks my heart. So many lost and broken souls out there. Yeah. Yes, Lady Tai Dai. That's what happened. Yeah. But, uh, and, and, and when I got there, I, I saw some security guys and reported it. And he goes, you want to make a police report? I went, come on, bro. Yeah. You know, so they went and you know, made sure he didn't hassle anybody else. And da -da -da. Yeah. Nani Alois, um, that's exactly it right there. You can take the boy out of white eye, but you can't take the white yeah. eye out of the boy. No can. And but you know what? Um, and that was a part of a you know this one school I, I martial arts training I went to, and they said if you feel undergunned, get crazy. Yeah. 
You know, because people are like, whoa, this guy is nuts. And well, the thing with getting crazy, also, it brings that adrenaline up. Oh, yeah. So that, you know, it's going to take a little more to beat you because you're all, you know, wound up. And yeah, yeah, so yeah. that's probably what felt good, too, after, you know, you get that adrenaline rush. Yeah, but, but, you know, you know how hard it is to sleep after a show, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I was up till 3 o'clock going, I, I should have stepped in an uppercut, you know, I'm reliving it a million times. But anyway... Um, it's a, it's, all good. It's and like you're breaking down your set, and yeah, then yeah. and also your punch. You're like, oh my elbow! I should have yeah, finished. Talk about turned it over. <laughs> I should I should have come in faster with the punchline. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, gang. Hey, Mark Gonzalez, how are you, brother? And mahalo for being here once again. Okay. Um, our first uh, video that uh, James and I will be editorializing mm -hmm. um, explains. What's up with daylight savings time that we call daylight ste stealing time, of mm -hmm. course, right? But let, let's check this out. Here in Hawaii, we don't use daylight saving time. Nope. Hawaii and Arizona are the only two states that don't use it. But Look at that graphic. These guys just, that's broadcast quality if I ever saw it. That's a clock. That's right. Oh, I get it. Yeah, but look at time. that. Hey, turn it back. Daylight savings. Have you ever wondered why? Let's find out. So this is interesting, though. Why ho only Hawaii and Arizona don't have daylight savings? I know why Hawaii. I don't know why Arizona. Hawaii, like, whatever, bro. I well, get there. I get there whatever time I get there. <laughs> but you know what? That's not the reason. There's actually a reason. Here, check it out. Science Hawaii with Chevy and <laughs> Ford. <laughs> For Arizona, it's pretty simple. The average daytime high temperature during the summer in Arizona is a ridiculous 107 degrees. So if you asked anyone in Arizona if they would like to have another hour of blistering sunshine in the summer, they'd say no thank you. In Hawaii, we don't have blistering heat, but we are closer to the equator. And that's why we don't that's use why. daylight saving time. How's that? Did you know that? It's I did not. Because of our proximity to the equator. I did not know that. Yeah, look. The closer you are to the equator, the more equal total daylight and nighttime hours are. Oh. Hawaii has nearly equal daylight and nighttime hours during daylight saving time months, with an average difference of only 21 minutes. Hawaii has used daylight saving oh, time twice in the past. They started it in April of 1933. Listen, look at this. They had They instilled... Daylight savings time in 1933. But listen to this part. But the plan was revoked after only three weeks. Three weeks. <laughs> you know, this is kind of stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, I keep missing the bus. <laughs> in 1933. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't like get kicked by the horse. <laughs> I also used daylight saving time during World War II and what the country called wartime. It was an effort to conserve fuel. That was the last time that Hawaii used it. By the 1960s, the use of daylight saving time varied so much across the country that in 1966, the U.S. passed the Uniform Time Act, in effect, to put everyone on the same time system. But each state could opt out if they chose to, hmm. and Hawaii opted out. Well, there you go. If you'd like me to answer any Hawaii weather or science-related question, just shoot me an email, and I'll do everything I can to get you the best answer. Chevy at, look, Chevy, uh, Chevalier at James Money. <laughs> dot com. <laughs> Hello for watching. There we go. <laughs> I yeah. thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, very interesting, short, a yeah. uh, little fact to the point. All right, and there's uh, Garrett Young. How are you? How's it, Garrett? Saying aloha, he's saying hi. Oh, you want to say good night to Michael? Oh, yes, we got Michael just shows up to say good night. Yeah. And then, we go, oh, wait a minute, where'd he go? Oh, there we go, yeah. He like a sing poo poo, hino hino, but no. No! Gotta <laughs> sleep on your own. <laughs> okay, what, uh, uh, Michael, what time do you get up? You, are you doing this that morning DJ thing? Keho! Hey, Keho! My objection is why are you pronouncing Hawaii like that? Thank yeah. 
He's trying. He's trying. That's what I was thinking too, but I didn't want to insult the guy. So thank yeah. you, Kehau. Yeah. <laughs> but at least not. At least he's Kehau. At least he's not going Hawaii. Yeah. You know? Hawaii. Hawaii. I'm Hawaii. fine. Thank you. <laughs> uh-huh. Hey, Mariana, I haven't seen you in a in a bit. Thank you for being here. Oh yeah, she shared. Um, you know, the, uh, on that uh, Hamajang Gang song that. Mm-hmm. Um, um, uh, no, no. No, no, no. Um, Miles and. <clears throat> uh, Vance most sing. Oh, okay. Her picture's there in a wedding dress. Ah. She she sent us a drop during her wedding. <laughs> wow. Went, what? Hey, Felicia, front la- front row hottie, how are you? Um, oh, you know which reminds me, um, the uh, Wayne uh, is going to be at the uh, Blue Note. Sean uh, Wayne. Sean Wayne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not Damon, but no. the brother. You know. Yeah. yeah. I met all those guys in back in the day. I was thinking about going. Maybe we could talk about it, you know, just to see what they're doing. He's doing four shows, two a night, Friday and Saturday. Yeah. Ooh, how's this? Ken Dog and Candy. Oh, that's right. Ken Dog and Candy. Hey, by the way, I'm seeing uh, names here that I'm, uh, some of which I'm not recognizing, but if I am, if you have been here before. But if you're new, let us know what your old neighborhood is, and maybe we have a custom-made Hawaii music video that goes through that area. Just for you. Just for you. Huh? Like K-Mac here. Do we do you remember seeing K-Mac before? No. Oh. Especially the Avatar. So Yeah. Again. Yeah. You're getting like me. It's like someone changed their shirt. Oh, new show! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But before we continue, I just like to tell people that when my throat gets dry and I get thirsty. I like to water down with some. <laughs> where there it is, Hawaii yeah. volcanic water. Ta-da! I have yeah. it too here. Yeah. yeah. So HawaiiVolcanic.com. Um, they are, these bottles are made with recycled plastic. Yeah. Uh, be pono, do what's right. When it rains on the volcanoes and it goes down, trickles down into our uh, artesian wells, and then they bring up these bottles just from down underneath the volcano. They dig them up yeah. and they're already bottled in the bottom of the, you know, the volcano. Yeah. And, ah. then, and it's perfect. So oh. get yourself some Hawaii volcanic water. There we go. Hey, um, Nick. Um, uh, Belaski? Belaski. Oh, you're good at that, yeah. man. Yeah, there we go. Oh, oh, why Manalo? Yeah, oh. we, we get why Manalo. Ken Dog, hang on, okay? I'm gonna, I'm, I'll cue something up for you. In fact, uh, I'll, I'll do the why, I'll do the why Manalo funk. That that one's kind of cool. Yeah. Okay, so uh, tell you what, I'm going to um, let's do this one here. Yep. Oh, there, oh Molokai. We go yep. to Molokai, right? And uh, well, you gotta watch this. So sad. Okay. Oops, that's not it. On Molokai, an attempted channel crossing gone wrong led to an overturned boat and a huge mess at Kepuhi Bay. This was the scene Monday afternoon at the beach on the island's western end. We're told a group of about five people, including two international swimmers, were planning to swim from Molokai to Oahu when an escort vessel anchored in rough seas close to shore. Waves quickly rolled the boat over, shattering it on the reef, leaving debris and the strong smell of fuel. It was, you know, it was pretty horrific. They, it busted up pretty well. I mean, the gas smell was overwhelming. So I left oh. the beach. I came back up here. Um, On Molokai. Yeah. Just kind of watched um, them try to get the, what was remaining of the hull out of the water, um, mm-hmm. which was pretty difficult because it was pretty rough. To me, it's just like something that could have been prevented, you know, and this. we're over here fighting for our resources, yet our resources are slowly getting poisoned by people's carelessness, you know, and I think they need to be held accountable for, like this guy, he anchored right in the lineup. In the Dealer lineup. Lord tells us the area has since been Surfer. cleared of scattered debris and the odor of fuel no longer remains. We've attempted to contact the swimmers involved but have not received a response. They all went dig out this way. They, they went dig out. Okay, um, are, you, are you ready? Um, hold on, I gotta go. I'm looking for the name again. I forgot who the Waimanalo brother was. Uh, oh, and there. Candy. Yeah, yeah, Ken Dog and Candy. Ken Dog and Candy, this is for you.
boom, there you go. Why Manalo? That was funny. Why Manalo is the other side of the earth for people from Wyanai? Yeah. It's the same thing. It's just add rain. <laughs> <laughs> if it had rain in Wyanai, it would be just like Why Manalo. Why Manalo? That's so funny. Why not? Instant Why Manalo. Just add water. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, Manalo, right? Uh, yeah. Ma ma why Manalo ride on Andy? Oh, I get. I miss hanging out in Nalo. Oh, and who's this? How do oh you say no, that? it's a bot. Huh? It's a bot. Bro. It's a bot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, guess what? He not a bot. That. No. No. Well, it's funny. I thought it was someone who mm, typed fast. Yeah. Celebrating the Daily Pigeon third anniversary. Yeah. Yes. For those of you just t uh, tuned in. Um, actually, it's the 30th, that's our anniversary, so we call May 1st the uh, first day of the uh, fourth year. Yeah, mahalo for that, that was awesome. Okay. So yeah. day one. Yeah, there we go. And uh, uh, Maui Tony Maderas, did you want to see Lahaina? I have some Maui ones, but I don't know that uh, it goes through. I have one that ends up in Lahaina, but... Uh, you know what? I have a I have a time lapse. We haven't. I don't think we've ever played that. You know, but anyway, let, let let's do this. And 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 Maui, I'll uh, Maui Tony Maderos. Well, we'll try to remember to come back and play you something. Okay, hang on. <clears throat> so this one here, that was the Molokai. Um, this here's a music video that uh, we don't see too much of. Um, there's a rap version of this, but I prefer this this kind of uh, mm. unplugged version. Yeah, I know. And look at this audience. You're going to love it. Oh. Tell me this doesn't remind you of playing the big shows. Big shows? Big shows. Right here, look. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to ask you to take your seats <laughs> as the harmonica concert begins. This is a whole channel of this guy playing harmonica near cows, and they all come running whenever he does it. I gotta see him in the, in the where is he? No, he's shooting. He just probably has the GoPro hooked up to the heart. But look at that. Great looking crowd. Look at this one here. Whoa. Oh, 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 look at this. Front row. I mean, tell me. <laughs> get, get, get back. Yeah. Are any of those red? <laughs> wow, they're actually coming up and lining up. Like, yeah, they are. This is all the front row people. No, no, <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> Look at this. They just, they love it. Look at all the flies. Oh. I would have ran not because of the cows. I would have ran because of the flies. Okay, I hate to admit it, but I was the opening act. Oh. <laughs> How did you do? Not until he started playing did they show up. Oh. I was just to the flies. The headliner. Yeah, the headliner yeah. showed up, but the flies, that, that was my crowd. Oh. You should have started out with, where's the beef? What? <laughs> <laughs> Mosh pit cows. <laughs> That's too funny. Oh, and uh, Ellen. Oh, that, that is cool. And happy third anniversary. Mahalo. Thank you so much. Get James ready for Wyoming. Oh, what? yeah. Oh, getting James ready for... Uh, I'll be there next weekend. If you want to borrow that video. I uh, should take a harmonica. No, a harmonica. Ayo. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, appearing at Kimo's Lahaina in one week on your plate. Oh, right there. What's and then what is Nani saying? Herbert Tanaka comment. Where's Herbert Tanaka's comment? She says I should not miss that. Okay, who wears the beef? Yeah, in the parking lot. I didn't see Herb's contact. Did right there. You? Oh, here. Play until the oh man. Play until the cows come home. There we go. Well, guess what? And it sounds like an easy tune. 
Okay, you know what? Uh, let, let, let's let me see, let me play this time lapse here from Maui Tony Maderos. Okay, I got I got to I got to do my anti clunky thing, but uh, it it should be okay. <clears throat> Man, well, I, th I didn't think my voice would be this bad, but I guess I pushed a little bit. But anyway, you probably was yelling when you was ready for scrap. That's why. <laughs> Strain your voice. What? You let go, bro. No. Okay, here's the um, a Maui time lapse, and I think this goes all the way into um, into Lahaina. I'm not sure. Okay, but let's see. No matter where you go, no matter what you do, take that Maui style with you. Cause if you ain't Maui styling, you just living on an island. Maui styling. Sister and brother Thailand. <laughs> yeah, hey, GB, uh, it's funny you would say that. Wait, hold on. Oh, come on. Oh, no. Chat. That's, what, that's what this is, GB. Um, I, I, I take the water, put it in here, put a little honey, and a dab of lemon a dab. on top of that. Do you go like that when you put the lemon? Dab. I don't get that. What is that? It's a dance move from like 10 years ago. 
Oh, a recent one. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> but I'll be on Maui um, this Sunday, this coming Sunday, performing at the Playground Maui. And then I'll be in Kona um, Saturday, performing at the Kona Elks Lodge. I didn't know they had a theater in there. They don't. You're going to be on the floor in the in the at the corner of a restaurant with a bullhorn. <laughs> I'm glad that is not true. They have a, a cozy little theater. That no, it's it's a great little theater. Yeah, so I can't wait. I'm excited. Uh, get your tickets. Still available. Available. You can go to comedianjamesmoney.com or uh, for Kona, you can go to Eventbrite and search James Money or mm -hmm. go to theplaygroundmaui.com and get your tickets. I'll be there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, GB, not only do I have this, um, I have a little hot plate. I wonder if I could put this on camera without breaking anything. Hold on. You see, there's this little... Don't burn yourself. Ouch! I was going to say... It's hot. <laughs> see, this is the little hot plate. You plug it in, and then you put it on your desk, right? And then you put that metal cup on top of it, and it stays hot through the whole thing. And believe me, <clears throat> it is definitely hot. Uh, how yeah. ironic that you got burned while showing us the cup of Hawaii volcanic water. Yeah. <laughs> and I always check to see if anyone threw a virgin in there, you know. Because... Oh, yeah. A, a, a snatch catcher. <laughs> no, a catch snatcher. Oh, Let's yeah. get it right. Uh, my show is Stand Up Comedy, Herbert. Uh, it's a stand up comedy show. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So it'll be. Okay. And I have, um, I guess, the 13th on uh, Kauai, Kauai yeah. coming up. The pre-Mother's Day show. Yes, the pre-Mother's the pre -Mother's Day show. Yeah. Uh, Frank DeLima, um, Augie Toba, and myself. Yeah. The same people who were at the MAC yeah. um, last Saturday. So it's going to be a great show. So you yeah. guys on Kauai, or if you know somebody on Kauai, tell them, hey, an awesome show coming down. Yeah, there you just go. Just before Mother's Day. And Candy. Hey, mahalo, bro, for sneaking in and... Uh, Pass the word if can, you know, yeah. and subscribe and maybe like before you yeah. go back. Uh, you sasa know. the like button before you get off. Yeah, sasa the yeah. like button. And then, I will always have thermos. Oh, yeah, that's old school. And we're going to give a shout out to Doc Bailey. Doc Bailey Cranes. And equipment. And equipment where they actually, you can rent cranes uh, or they can even teach you how to use it. They are located in Las Vegas, yeah. Oakland, California, here in Hawaii and in Guam. Guam. Yeah. Also, yeah. Aloha Kia. We know a guy. We know a in guy. In fact, Andy has two cars in his family. I have two Kias in my yeah. family. And yeah, his, his daughter loves her Kia. Loves her Kia. Very much. And also to our friends at TNT Tinting. Right. And I tinted my truck and a number of other trucks. And when if you decide to tint your um, car, right, you don't have to get the gangster tint. Yeah. They have all kinds, but I tinted my front windshield by their recommendation. And it looks clear, but it stops the UV. So when you park, you get in your truck, not all hot. Or car, I guess. Yeah, because my, my sister's car doesn't have the tinting. Yeah. My truck does. I get into her car, it's burning up in there. Yeah. My truck is nice and cool. Did you tint the front windshield? I did not do the front windshield, but I do have the sides oh. and majority. I didn't know about that until... Yeah. You it's know, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, it's something new. It just happened like in the last ten years. Mm. Like you know, with with. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody who was installing the tent was doing that. You know? like, what are they doing? What are they doing? Uh, something new. But don't worry, the truck will be nice and cool. Nice and cool. Unlike that dance move that Andy's doing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know we tease um, Bryce, um, Bryce, Moore Bryce Moore a lot. Right and hey, it's 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 uh, you know Joe Moore's son. That's how he got the gig. Yeah. So um, we uh, you know see Honda suggesting a lot of these, but yeah. check this. This is him from a year ago introducing Bryce. Ooh. Finally tonight, hope you saw my son's first on-air report for KHON2 earlier in this newscast. Bryce is a graduate of Mid Pacific Institute and the University of Hawaii. Or, yeah, no, where he's he majored still. in English. He became a full time member of our news team in December, you know, <laughs> writing and posting news stories. Evidently, they don't have the cameras that can capture <laughs> video. They got the same hair style. Yeah. I don't know. Just different it's on color. Their website. He's now what's known in the business as a 
multimedia journalist ah. who conducts interviews, records and edits video, and, does and writes and reports news stories for our website and on-air broadcasts. I oh. oh, look at this. Look at this. I caught him halfway through. Mm. Watch him. Watch Bryce morph into his father. Ironically, <laughs> both Bryce and his dad <laughs> started their TV news careers in Hawaii at the age of 22. He's now 23. Dad is considerably older. <laughs> and yes, the old man is more than just a little proud of his son. And I'd certainly be remiss if I didn't mention that Bryce's mom, Teresa, deserves the lion's share of the credit for the fine young man he's oh, become. I love that. And we're delighted Bryce has joined Dad on air at KHON2. Mm. How's that? So I myself yeah. got into city bus as a driver yeah. because my dad was a supervisor at the time. So this is almost like the same thing to me. Wow. Well, you know what? My dad was a welder, right? And it, boy, you want to become a welder? And I said, no! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to be a bus driver, but... Yeah, but you were a good bus driver. That's thank the you. Thing, thank you, know? you. Plus, the money is good. So I was like, well, shoot? But you know, I, I feel like that. You know, if you're going to do something, just commit. Either <laughs> don't do it or do the best job you can. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Well, I, you know? my dad didn't want me to, to, to be a bus driver. Gary, mahalo for the uh, 500 biddies on the Twitch side. Keaulani. Appreciate yeah. it, man. My dad didn't want me to be a bus driver. My mom, I so I went tour tour bus driving. Yeah. And then my mom, he's already got his license, you know, the CDL yeah. license. So eventually he pulled me in, and uh, everybody at the bus company was saying, he, oh, my, no, my dad was saying, as soon as I retire, son, they're going to fire you. Oh, <laughs> that's too funny. But you didn't last that long, right? Well, mine's is because of injury. Um, oh. I, I did, he retired. I was still there for a long time. And then, uh, because of my back injury, I decided I shouldn't stay because it only makes my back worse. Oh my! So my back's a lot yeah. better now that I'm not driving anymore. Yeah. Do the best you can with what you got. That's yeah. it. Namaste Zen, yeah. right there. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Let's see, Dan. Um, oh, here. This is cool. You know the whole bee thing. Mm -hmm. You know there are people ah bees bees and they freak out. I go if hey, I just relax. Yeah. If you don't freak them out, they're not going to attack you. And, you know, there are people who have bee allergies, yeah, and they yeah, yeah. swell up like the Michelin man if they get bit, so I get it, right? But um, other than that, did you know that bees are almost an endangered species? Yeah, I don't like to hear that, but I, yeah. I, but there's a piece of information in this little bee thing here that I did not know. Yeah. Check this out here. I love the bees. Hawaii is one of the country's biggest producers of honey and oh, wow. queen bees. And we are one of the biggest producers of honey and bees. I didn't Hawaii. Know, I didn't know that. Me either, but there's more. Check this out. And our farmers rely on honey bee pollination. To wrap up Earth Month, I visit High Honey Farm on Oahu's North Shore to meet some of the hardest workers on the planet and see what all the buzz is about. Did you know what? Uh, Tomislav Abdelin is not just back. a beekeeper. He's a bee educator, changing fear into respect through apiary tours, tastings, and school the name visits. Uh, we all need bees. We all need bees because we all depend on the food. What kind of accent is this here? Food we're eating uh, because they all pollinate uh, most of our crops. And, uh, is that like some kind of like, uh, to Look at the name. Yeah, some kind of Russian, like... Yeah, like, like Slav, yeah, some you know, like, like Russian or Croatian or Ukrainian, somewhere around that. Yeah. To educate kids actually about the pollination and about the bees, they're not actually, can be not scary and they're friendly. It does sound uh, Russian. Livestock, yeah. and uh, this is why we're bringing this. That's why you have this briefcase. Yes, this briefcase <laughs> <laughs> to take them to the schools uh, so it's safe for them. At Abdelin's farm near the old Waialua sugar mill, I learned about bees' favorite foods Waialua, that's, that's and put on a protective suit to get up close and personal with She's the busy so residents. I meet the queen, her female workers, and male drones. Even witness a bee birth. A what? Bieber? Like Justin Bieber? I, I think so. Do they sing to him? That must be. 
feel when you held them? It was amazing. I feel like I'm more connected to the earth. Threatened by climate change, pesticides, and pollution, Abdulin says education is helping save the world's bee population. If they go extinct, humans would too, yep. within four years. Bee removal is a very important part of... Um, yes, Kevin. ...inspiration and saving the bees in general and um, in the world. And why we do that? Because bees struggling. We already learned what happens to them if they take somebody's house. Most likely they get exterminated. We need more bees. This is why we come, we save them, we move them to the boxes, we move them to the farm, we treat them, we take care of them. So if you have a bee problem in your house, <laughs> you'll come get them and move them there. So a lot of TikTok <sighs> videos that I watch are people who rescue bees. Obviously, it's like in the mainland yeah. or whatever. They go to your house if you have a you know a hive building in, in, the, in your walls, yeah. and they'll rescue the bees and then they'll fix your wall. Yeah, and it's called insect busing. Really? Yes. Yeah. I have that bottle right there, the one, the big one <laughs> in the middle, and you got to turn it upside down like that yeah. too. Year or two, we harvest honey from them. <laughs> What started off as one swarm Abdulin removed from a hiking trail has grown to more than 100 colonies on Oahu and wow. the Big Island. And products ranging from honey infused with matcha, Hawaiian chili, cocoa, and pineapple to ointments made of bee propolis, wax, pollen, and a special secretion for nursing bees, all believed to have healing properties. There's even a spa built on top of beehives where you can get bee sting therapy and vibration <gasps> therapy. Did she, did she say bee sting therapy? Mm -hmm. People get like arthritis and stuff. Well, you know, some people, if you if you hurt yourself and you get swollen, sometimes they say that you you, you sting it with a bee and it takes the swelling down mm. because of the, of the body going, oh, it's got stung and it brings stuff there to do that. Unfortunately, that's the end of that bee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so thanks so much, Das. Good to see you. That, that's a cool story, but I wish they would talk about you know the reason we would go extinct. It's not because of you know they won't we won't have honey. It's because flowers won't get pollinated. Well, no, it did. In, in oh, the, should... it, it said it said if if bees became extinct, mm -hmm. humans would become extinct yeah. four years later. Yeah, because there would be no pollination. Yeah, but I wish they would you know dig more into that and yeah. You know, drive that point across well we should go there and listen to his talk i bet you if they have casey lunn they was a he's gonna go in the and get stung right now <laughs> or or bryce well bryce would be in the side watching casey lunn get, get stung, stung. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> send casey in and then they say oh wait a minute the weather is changing send chief meteorologist <laughs> so i hear you get intoxicated from fresh bee nest i don't know if it's true but i would like to try yeah, no, it, it's it's easy to do. You know that 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 board they were holding with all the bees. You just stick your face in it mm. right there, and then you will. It's a wonderful high. <laughs> no, but a I think they do have business business. There we go. Yeah, that's the best thing about the Hema Jang Gang is all the punchlines that come up after each story, <laughs> right? <laughs> because they are funny. <laughs> uh. What, and what did Polani say? Let me, help me read this. I know this is clever, but I'm not. I've ear e. I've been ear e. Ear e. Broadcast quality. Yes, Boom. there it is. Front and center yes. broadcast quality. It all comes back down to that. When yeah. you guys share the podcast on your Facebook, uh, hashtag it broadcast quality. Broad <laughs> we should do that. <laughs> hashtag broadcast quality. Yeah. And you know what? Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Broadcast quality there. Right there, right there folks. That's you just it. witnessed it. <laughs> Probably you, Yugoslavian. Oh. oh, really? I don't know. They. I don't know if Yugoslavian, but maybe he go Slavian. <laughs> hey they go Slavian. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We got to remember the pronouns. Yeah, yeah we got to yeah. remember that. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, they say Hawaii produces the best honey in the world due to our flowers oh. that we have at home. Oh, well, guess what? It it is delicious. Yeah, yeah. And for but you know what? Um, I'm I'm trying to kick sugar, right? So I thought honey was better than sugar, right? Guess what? It's a little better, but it's yeah. still like 
it's still like it's I think refined honey is all glucose and honey is fructose and no maybe I got that wrong refined is fructose and anyway whatever yeah. But honey is half and half, and refined is a hundred percent. Yeah, I think um, so. Graham, who's a vegetarian, when I was I talked to him about stuff yeah. like this, and like, oh yeah, I'm I'm jumping off of uh, the the processed sugars or whatever, yeah, yeah. and going into honey, and he's like, well, it's not that much better. Maybe you should try. I think it's a thing called like stevia and um, monk fruit sweeteners. <laughs> and I was like, okay, so I get that from where? <laughs> oh, excuse me, where you keep the monk fruit sweetener? Yeah. But, huh? <laughs> uh, in in uh, Berkeley. Yeah. <laughs> Have you tried LA? <laughs> <laughs> Have you tried Whole Foods? Yeah. So, yeah. but anyway. that's that's what he recommends, and I don't know what the price is, but I'll, I'll give it a try. I'll let you know how it goes. Well, that, that that's why you lose weight because it's so expensive. You can only have a little <laughs> tiny bit. <laughs> I know. Uh, I saw a picture of myself uh, in 2018. Yeah. And I was huge. I want to see that picture. Where is it? I was gigantic. Wow. Jim Payne, Paul, oh, yeah. Keolani. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, that's all old stuff. Um, I use nothing but honey. Really? That's great, Barry. Yeah. Let's see. Paul, honey. Uh, my mom is allergic to bees. I got stung by a wasp, and I didn't know if I was allergic. So after I got stung, there was... A very tense 10 minutes after to see if I was going to swell up. <laughs> okay, wait. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. Hold on, hold on. How much time I got left? Wait, wait, wait. The game not power yet. Yeah. Well, you're still all right. <laughs> still all right. Uh, you're going you're gonna to finish your pizza. I'm swollen. Like, now nah, you was always like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good excuse. Oh, yes. Said. So, Stevia. Yes, ste yes, stevia is what I was about to say. I think I had, it had a weird aftertaste. Her well, that was the receipt. Oh, wait, put that up here. Wait, wait, wait let's go to James. That was Camp. huge. Look, look, check this out. Oh, it's kind of it's the, the, oh, the it's blurry. The, yeah, you got you to put your hands around it so it doesn't. There we go. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So that's two people. Oh, oh, it's blurry. It's, oh, it's focusing on my fingers. Maybe I'll text this to you. Well, you do look bigger. No, yeah. you do look bigger. Well, well, we'll do it for another, another time. You get it to me, though. Yeah. Aloha from Kona, Uncle Andy. How's it, Kenny? Mahalo. Yeah, I was... I was 455, 460 pounds then. Wow. So I'm not, now I'm 400, so... Wow, it does not look like you, James. Yeah. I know. Well, there we go. You still got the suit? I... Don't fit it anymore. Oh. In a good way. Oh, you look too big. You look skinny. Thank you. Plus, I always sit sideways, so. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Smart man. Okay. Um, oops. Let's go back to this shot. Um, let's see. Now, this last, um, this last video we will be editorial on yes. is about canoe building. Yes. And the, the person that um, is doing the canoe buildings, his name is Doug... Bumate. Oh. Now, in my family, you get Bumatais mm. and Bumates. And his father, if I'm not mistaken, was Raymond, right? And we are all, you know, kind of related in, in a way. Like, uh, you know, at, in our family, half were Bumatai, half were Bumate because of the, you know, the birth certificate weirdness. Anyway, so. Um, How is the spelling different? Is it the E at the end? Is that no, an not I? Y. Oh, huh. Interesting. So, I used to be 400 pounds. Now I'm 192. Wow. Whoa. Is that even possible? Yes, it is. Man. Nice. You, you, can, you can create your own little friend. I was going to say. <laughs> oh. I'll never be alone. Wow, Barry. Yeah. yeah. Congrats, Congrats, Barry, by the way. Okay, let's, let's look at this uh, last one here. And this is about um, canoe building. Yeah. And they did an interesting thing here. Um, <clears throat> wait, wait, how come? What's, oh, oh the, <laughs> sorry. And they did a thing. Uh, anyway, let's watch. Oh, please Welcome please. back to Living It Away. Oh, Today is the final episode of Forest. I thought it was Her Majesty. Majesty. A year-long series in collab. I thought it was going to be the Queen. Yes, me too. But no. 
But he's good too. He interviewed me on when I was on this. Smart with the Hawaii Department of Land and Natural Resources. We've come full circle to the beginning as we explore native forests and culture and one culturally rich aspect of our forests. Here is the twelfth and final installment of Forests for Life. Forests for Life. This is good. Hokulea is getting ready to sail, yeah? Look at this. Oh, that's the ancient Hawaiian router. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> no router. You guys around who can take a native koa log and fashion a racing canoe from it. Oh, I got that song in my head. This one? By the way, I tested this. I don't think we're going to get a copy of this, but I'm talking over it just in case. Oh, yes. Does this guy look like me? Oh, you know what? He has two eyes like you. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. You know, just... It's mind-boggling what they did back then with what they had. Wow. Really Doug exactly. is at the Kapapala Canoe Forest on Hawaii Island with Riley De Matos from the DLNR Division of Forestry and Wildlife. The stuff his ancestors had to move were 45 to 48 foot long, 10 ton koa logs suitable for building vessels that in ancient times moved people from place to place and were used to catch fish for food. On the way up, we you know, was talking to Doug, and we should be using koa for canoe building. It's, it's. I, I would, I would hate to see the knowledge and the pastime lost if we don't get canoe logs out to the public and to the canoe carvers. You know. After many years of discussions, DLNR's forestry division is finishing up a management plan for the Kapapala Canoe Forest, which will allow traditional koa canoe builders to harvest a certain number nice. of logs. De that, that's a big deal. Yeah. Because normally they can only pick the logs that have fallen down, and of course those go fast, right? That's a really good idea, and allow it because of passing the... the the tradition of how to make these canoes yeah. on to the next generation. It's hard the work wood. of previous foresters. As of right now, we're just <laughs> finishing up the management plan. Um, it'll be then going to the BLNR for approval. Um, once that is done, then we'll figure out an allocation process, and then we'll uh, make a group or form a group to yeah, decide even. on the allocation process, and then hopefully soon after that, we can start the uh, log harvest. Building a massive racing canoe from enormous logs was a learning process for Doug. Of course, I learned from my dad. My dad uh, kind of learned from his grandfather when he was just a little guy. Uh, he, it was kind of like the, his grandfather planted the seed in him. That seed sprouted for Doug. <laughs> and when he started his first log, I was that little guy, you know, two, three years old and um, it never stopped since then. And now he's hoping to continue the tradition through his 17-year-old son, who was too shy to appear on camera, <laughs> but is showing interest. I, yeah, that's, I, not, I, that's not a boom of time thing. That grows on you, right? And when I grew up, I thought everybody did it. You know, I was a little kid. And when I got older, I realized that nobody does this. So it's, it's, it's a special thing being able to, to do this, right? So, yeah. It's a good thing. A good thing to cherish, preserve, and practice the past. The canoe he's currently repairing was built more than a half century ago and is being... 50 years ago, they built this canoe. Wow. Ready for the upcoming race season. As Doug and the few remaining traditional canoe builders look forward to the day, soon, when they can take trees from the Kapapala Canoe Forest, he reflects on maintaining the traditional way. It's an art. Today, a lot of people build a lot of, a lot of strips, whether it be cedar strip canoes you see in the mainland. There's some people here doing a lot of core, core planks and strips. Um, but that's how it was traditionally done from way back. So, and that's a, a dying art right now with, with the full log, right, from a full log. So that's a dying art right now, and it's, I think it's very important for us to keep that and, and pass that down. You know, like they're doing with hula, we're trying to do our part with, with canoes. Wow. I like that. I like that. I like that. You know, it's interesting because, you know, the Koa Canoe, there it's mostly art and, you know, nostalgia because in any of the canoe races, they're too slow because the oh. because the fiberglass canoes are so much lighter. 
and they may be a little more buoyant if I'm not mistaken mm -hmm. also. But someone told me, I got everybody, you know me? No, they can't race them because they're just not fast enough. Right, right, right. Know? But like you look, when you go into um, uh, the Outrigger Hotel, they got that beautiful Koa canoe sitting mm -hmm. right there. <laughs> Nobody would put a fiberglass canoe there to look at, you know? Well, they should do like a, a Koa canoe, a only Koa canoe race. Thing. Oh, great idea. Yeah. Like, it, it, don't bring in these fiberglass ones. You know, of course, they're faster, sure. But traditionally, the Koa canoe. The Koa canoe. Oh, that means. Yeah. Right. Wow, what a great idea. Are, I wonder if there are enough. Well, I guess over time, it'll, you know, like Mary Monarch, when we watched, you showed the history yeah, where yeah. it wasn't popular back then and now it's huge. Wow. Maybe that's something for the future of the Keiki, you know, that to could be. take and, on. And maybe people, because I'll bet you other um, island uh, cultures have coal canoes. Maybe they could bring mm. them over. Johnny Rocks Hollywood saying, great show. Mahalo, Johnny. Thank you very much. Hollywood. Ooh, Samoan Faut uh, Fautasi. Fautasi, yep. Fautasi. Hey, follow Samoan Fautasi. is transitioning to fiberglass. It is just a lost art. Yeah. yeah. It's Ooh. a big, big canoe race in Pango Pango Harbor. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, but that's a great idea. Yeah. Maybe we can do it. It's broadcast quality. <gasps> Maybe that Casey Lunn, yeah, or Her Majesty, Her Majesty, yeah, Kelly Simak be on the boat. What would Kelly do? I know. Oh, go follow Johnny Rocks Hollywood over here, and there's Corey Tiddeman. Hey, in Puget Sound, my Farah Day Airy Fourth of July one canoe race. Who's that? Mahalo, Lady Tie Dye for donating the five hundred bitties. Wow, thank you, Lady Tie Dye. I was talking to Corey Tinnaman. What? You want to come up? Okay, wait. Hold on. Hold on. You gotta. You gotta we gotta. We gotta do this right. Come on. Yeah, she was trying to climb up by it, you know, because she yeah. got the medicine on her back, so I didn't want to. Ah, I don't care. I'm gonna. There you go. I'll <laughs> kill my fleas too. You know, I know. <laughs> she has the top spot right here. I yeah. know. Okay. All right, gang. Well, that pretty much brings us to the end of the show. You wanna say something? Huh? Okay, not cool. Right. You know, uh, remember puku, right? Puku is a Hawaiian word that uh, describes the wedge, a piece of wood that you put into the canoe when there's a crack. Oh. Right? It was called a puku, you know? And, and, and I just thought it was funny to name them the wedge because <laughs> whenever anybody did something, here come puku in the middle, so I called them puku. But it's almost yeah. like Miles and his cat. Did Miles' cat jump. Uh, is it, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it, is it humu? Humu humu nuku yeah. nuku apua. Yeah. I know, but uh, he called him humu. Ah, so, did I go sweet face? She's yeah, saying, she's saying happy anniversary to you. Oh, there we go. Here, let me see. There. <laughs> there she is, ladies and gentlemen. Now that is broadcast quality. Broadcast quality. Did she press oh, something? Oh, no, she's got a pause on the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> she's typing what she wants to tell everyone. Yeah, there she was in. She was in the chat. Yeah, yeah, I cannot go. She typed Hamajang. Did she spell it? No, no, no worry. No more auto carrot and uh, yeah. it's a spell free zone. Oh, look at this, um, Kili um, Okamura Aikao. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> Usually you have the 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 Japanese name with with the Hawaiian in the middle, and brought to get them by the opposite. Mm. That's cool. Wow, right. Okay, take a bite out of crime, Kinako. Oh, cute. Right. McGruff. There we go. Tear up. You're so cute, Kinako. There it's those go. eyes. It's the eyes. Right? Yeah. There the eyes have it. All Ke right, gang. Ke Kelly said sister, because you said brada. Where? Kelly right there, the last one. You oh, said oh, oh, Kelly. Oh, did I say brada? I'm yeah. sorry. You know, uh, uh, local guys do that. You ever talk to women, you go, bra. They go, eh. Never mind, bra me. Yeah. I am a lady, a bahine. <laughs> and I know more bra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why we talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> Mahalo, my brothers, and have a great night. Thank you, Barry. I appreciate that. Yeah, and Kelly. Oh, I get it. Um, I, 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 I thought it was Kelly. Yeah. Yeah, but <clears throat> dyslexics. Um, he wants an interview with my cousin Shannon. Oh, uh, Shannon, I call was your cousin. Oh, yeah, I know, I, I know Shannon from, uh, you know, Las Vegas, and he's on that television show, Counting mm. Cars, and 
all kinds. Congratulations on three years. Oh, thank you, Medium Seven. Huh? And congratulations, Hemajang Gang. Yeah, thank you for being here. And mahalo nui loa to Nani Aloha, Si Honda, uh, Ann Ware, and Devin, our moderationists, keeping the bowling ball going yeah. down the alley and out of the gutter. Yeah. Please remember to sass on the like button and subscribes. Yeah. So Antilytics and Uncle Algorithm. Yeah. You know, can help us out. Yeah. Share on Facebook, wherever you can, on Instagram. Tell people about the Daily Pigeon. And right. you never know, when we get big enough, we might come out to you, visit you guys. Yeah. And, and please, if you're on YouTube, no shame, sob scribble, okay? Close. Close. We're so close. We're trying to get to 30,000. And, uh, the, oh, let's see. Oh, yes, mention the celebration on Wednesday, please. <laughs> this, this is her. Um, we're going to celebrate the um, the three years on Wednesday. Oh. And Nani Aloha is trying to think of some um, some maybe prizes we can give away. Or, Sweet. You know, free digital albums or something. She's working on something, but... Uh, I know I'm kind of a mm, Grinch when it comes to celebrations like that. You know, I'm like, hey, <sighs> only three years. Come on. <laughs> You've but, seen a lot of celebrations. And yeah, it's kind of like, yeah, nah, yeah. Well, you get to that point, you know. But anyway, uh, yes, Anani, I will. Uh, I did that. Yeah. Awe and Sasa for you. A hey, mahalo. Awesome. Yes. Slam them. I appreciate it, Byron. Thank you. Three cheers. There we go. Okay. And uh, Kenny uh, says, I'll send some of my CDs to give away. Please DM address. Oh, well, um, you'll have to deal with... Um, Nani Aloha? Nani Aloha, because <clears throat> I, I'm not good at snail mail. Yeah. <laughs> I know, Star Wars on Thursday. But mahalo, Kenny, I appreciate that. Maybe we can give some stuff away, okay? And um, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. Did you hear? Bat phone ding. Was that? Oh, Kenny from Friday Night Jams. Oh, that. Oh, I'm sorry, Kenny. I didn't even uh, recognize you. Uh, Nani just said that's Kenny from Friday Night Jams. Yes, um, they do. A, they do. They're on Twitch and they do a. Um, a, a well, show you can't see from the of, avatar. The avatar's kind of far away, so far that's away. why. Yeah, but Tagavila, I should have. You know, I should have recognized them. It's been a while since I've. Uh, you know, been on Twitch, actually. Mm. Yeah. All right, gang, that's it. Mahalo nui loa. I'm going to poke the button. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Here we go. Say goodbye. Okay, wait, wait. Say goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.